1949, an irregularly shaped metal part made from a particular alloy was galvanized with zinc using a ZnNO32 solution. When a current of 2.599 amps was used, it took exactly one hour to deposit a 0.01123 millimeter layer of zinc on the part. What was the total surface area of the part? And then they give us this extra information that the density of zinc is 7.14 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, so a lot of units here, a lot of different units, and a lot of numbers. So let's just compartmentalize here, right? The first thing that I know is that I'm dealing with zinc, right? We have zinc specifically with a ZnNO32 solution. So that might come in handy later down the road. So I'm just going to write out that, okay, I have zinc. Specifically, it's the ZnNO32. So just zinc nitrate. Now they did tell me that I have a current, right? 2.599 amps. And just know when we're doing chemistry formulas, current is not represented by a C or an A. It's represented by an I value. So I have an I value of 2.599 and that's amps. And maybe, there we go. And they tell me that this took exactly one hour. So that's a time. So I have a lowercase t, that's one hour. Okay. And they tell me that I have some sort of distance, right? They tell me I have a millimeter layer and that's 0 0.01123. Now I, I guess we could say d equals, but Generally, you know, chemistry, we don't really have any distance formulas because that's more part for physics. But maybe I'll just put that up here. The zinc had a 0 0.01123 millimeter layer of the zinc. Now we're looking for the total surface area. All right, so let's see. If I wanted to just go a little bit ahead right? Total surface area. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really shot in the dark here, right? Because if I'm scanning my formulas for total surface area for any, any uh, subject in, or any topic in chemistry, no formula is jumping out at me, right? There's, there's no one set formula that says total surface area equals that we use kind of like, not like D equals M over V or PV equals NR with ever t so something we have to maybe think of one formula that will get us to this area so let's see what we have well they give me an i and a t value right and i am talking about zinc so they gave me a metal right and it seems like they gave me this density for some reason oh, i hope for some reason that we can use it and the density is in grams per centimeter cubed. Centimeter cubed is a volume. And maybe I could link a volume to a surface area. But the first thing I would have to find out is how many grams, right? What's that mass? So I say to myself, okay, what is the formula that maybe I can use that has an I, a T value, right? If I can get to a mass, maybe, maybe that would be great. So I know a formula that can actually link a current with the, with the time and the number of moles. And that's this formula here, right? N equals T times I divided by F. Maybe I could use this first. Now, if I'm using this formula, N is the number of moles of electrons, because we're talking about redox reactions. Now, they do tell us that we have a time here, right? One hour. We have a current. So that's the I value, 2.599 amps. And F is Faraday's constant. That's the constant value of 96,485. And the units here would be coulombs per mole. So I can use this formula to get it started. So let's see, I have N equals I will put my little division sign here. We got two values on the top, one value on the bottom. We have the 2.599 and the 96,485. But for your time, just know that if you use this formula, 
The time has to be in seconds, not hours. So before I put in one, I have to convert that one hour into seconds. So I can quickly just go from hours to seconds, right? And if you want to, you could times it by 60 to get it to minutes and then times by 60 again to get it into seconds. But 60 times 60 is the same thing as just timesing it by 300, uh, 3,600. So I have a total of 3,600 seconds or in one hour. And that's the number that I'm going to use over here. 3,600 seconds. So I'm going to put the 3,600. Okay. So let's see. Let's plug this all into the calculator and let's see what we get. So 3,600 times 2.599 divided by 96,000. Whoop. 96,485, and just checking, that looks good to me. Okay, let's press enter. And here are the number of moles. So I have N, which equals 0 0.09697, we'll call it. That's the amount of moles of electrons. All right, but now, I still kind of want to get to zinc because in order to use this density formula, I have to have moles of zinc or at least some form of zinc. So I have to convert moles of electrons. So let's just start off there, right? We have 0 0.09697. I have that in moles of electrons, but ultimately... If I want to get to use the density formula, I have to find that mass. So we can try to convert to grams of zinc. But now, moles of electrons to grams of electrons, I can't do that in one shot. And technically, if you want to get from one unit to another, I have to go through moles. But that comes from a balanced equation. So we got to make the balanced equation. Now, in this case, they told us that we're starting off with Zn NO32 solution. So, I'm starting off with a zinc. But if I'm using Zn NO32, that's an ion because this is a ionic compound. What was the charge of the zinc here? Well, this 2 crisscrosses up, telling me that the zinc was a plus 2 charge. So, I, I'm starting off with a plus 2 charge. And I'm going just to the zinc electrode, since we're talking about electrolysis, which has to be the solid. No charge here. And since this one has a charge, this has to be aqueous. But now, the elements are balanced, but the charges aren't balanced. I have an overall plus 2 on the left side. I have a 0 on the right side. You always add electrons to the more positive side. So I'm going to add it to the left, and I'm going to add 2 electrons, because 2 minuses plus two positives will get me to zero. And now I can go from mole of electron to mole of zinc to gram of zinc. So let's go for it. 0 0.09697, that's the moles of electrons. Let's multiply that by our first conversion factor. We're gonna put mole of electron on the bottom and mole of zinc on the top. This comes from your balanced equation. You have two moles of electrons for every one mole of zinc. So one mole of zinc for every two moles of electrons. The moles will cancel out of the electrons. And now let's just get those grams. So second conversion factor, mole of zinc on the bottom, gram of zinc up on the top. This is now your periodic table where one mole equals the molar mass. So that's 65.38 for zinc. Moles of zinc cancel, and now I'm only going to be left with my grams of zinc. So I'm just going to take this whole number, press enter. I'm going to divide by 2. That looks good. And then I'm mul going to multiply by 65.38. Everything looks good here. So now I have a mass of 3.170, we'll say, grams of zinc. So now let me just put a line here because we're going to be now working up top here. So I'm just going to box this off because we're going to be using this value. And this is a mass. So we finally found the mass of zinc. 
and we can now use the density to find out the volume, right? So the density formula is D equals M divided by V. So if I want to solve for volume, I could just swap the D and the V, right? The density will come down in the denominator and the volume will go up here. So the new formula is now volume equals mass divided by density. All right, so let's give it a go. Volume equals something divided by something else. We have the mass, which was the 3.170 grams, and the density, they told us, was 7.140, and that's grams per centimeter cubed. The grams will cancel out with the grams, and now we have a volume of this number divided by 7.140. That looks good to me. So we have 0 0.44, we'll say 44, 398, and that's centimeters cubed because that was the only unit that was left at the end of the day. All right, but now where do we go from here? Well, I try to think of formulas that have to do with volume. And generally speaking, a volume has to deal with a length times width times height. Now, they did say that this was a irregular irregularly shaped metal, so it's not like a perfect cube or a perfect, uh, you know, uh, rectangular uh, three-dimensional object. So the only thing that matters here is just the units, right? If my volume is in centimeters cubed, that means that I have three units of a distance multiplied by each other. That's why I get the centimeters cubed. So in this case, the three units would be a centimeter for the length, a centimeter for the width, and a centimeter for the height. Going back to here, they gave me one of the lengths, right? Not lengths, but um, a distance, right? 0 0.01123 millimeters. But if I'm trying to use this formula, I have to have it in centimeters because my volume is in centimeters cubed. So it will just be easier if we convert this millimeter into a centimeter. But that's all good because millimeter to centimeter is always just dividing by 10. Millimeter and centimeter are 10 away on uh, your, uh, what is that? SI units, right? So point zero, one, one, two, three, if you wanted to just do that quickly, divide by 10, you just move the decimal over. So 0 0.001123 centimeters, and that goes for one of these. So 0 0.001123, and this will equal, we'll put the volume for now, but we know what the volume is, it's this guy. But now the other two, Huh, right? I don't, I don't see any other two distances to plug it in. So technically I will have two variables, but wait, they wanted us to find the total surface area. And generally an area equals length times width, right? Or length times height or width times height, but just the two of these multiplied by each other. And I have two of the centimeters times by each other. It does not matter whether you put this value as the height, and then you have length times width equals the area. It, it just matters that they're all centimeters, so it doesn't matter. But this, these two are the surface area. So in essence, we're, we don't have two variables. We're combining this together as just a single surface area, and that's the X value. So in essence, a volume equals the surface area just times one more distance. So 0 0.44398 equals 0 0.001123 times x. Get x by itself, you just got to divide by that length, 0 0.001123. 0 0.001123, this cancels out. And now we get our surface area. 
So I'm just going up to this, press enter, divided by this value. Everything looks good here. Let's press enter. And I get roughly 395.4, right? Because we need four sig figs. So my area, or maybe I'll say surface area equals 395.4. And that would be in centimeters squared because centimeter times centimeter is two centimeters. And that is your final answer. Whew, let's color this in and be done with this question, right? What'd you think? I hope this helped. This one was crazy, but if you guys got this one, you guys are going to be great on your test and quiz for, for this chapter. All right. A lot of different things coming back from like Gen Chem 1. So we can't forget those conversions, right? Unit conversions, stoichiometry conversions. They're all here. But anyway, this was fun. If this helped you at all, please press the subscribe button as that just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this cool educational service exists. And I thank you so much. My brother and I, we really do appreciate you guys. Let's keep learning and studying, and let's do well on those tests and quizzes. I'll talk to you later. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.